Hey, well, welcome back to another episode of the Grace Team Leadership Podcast. My name is Tyler. I'm one of the pastors here at Northlands Church, and this podcast is dedicated to the champions here at Northlands that are our Grace Team leaders. These are our volunteer and service teams who are serving faithfully throughout the life of Northlands, and we hope that this podcast would be a resource tool for you to use that we might grow together and become better leaders. Why do we want to become better leaders? Well, it's mission critical here at Northlands. When we become better leaders, our teams become stronger, our ministry then becomes more effective, and most importantly, we will see more and more life transformation. I truly do believe much of this hangs on us committing to becoming better leaders together. Now, at the start of every uh, podcast, I would love to answer some of the questions that you may have. So if you send your questions into Tyler at NorthlandsChurch.com, my hope is to be able to answer some of those questions in the episodes following. But really, those questions will also help us uh, really shape the direction of future episodes. So I'd love to hear those comments, anything that I might be able to clarify around leadership, things that we've talked about or things that you think we might uh, need to cover in future episodes. Please, again, send those to Tyler at northlandschurch.com. Let's have a quick recap of last week before we jump into this week's content. Uh, Last week we talked about the forbidden phrase of leaders. What is the forbidden phrase? We will never say this as leaders. We will never say our people won't. That is a forbidden phrase. We looked at the fact that bad habits are going to form on our team from time to time. How do we break them and how do we instill the desired healthy habits, the behaviors and values that we want to see present in our team? And it begins by understanding we will never say the forbidden phrase of our people won't. Instead, we are going to say we have not led our people to. When we embrace that sentence of we will not, we have not led our people to, it's the very beginning to helping see healthy habits form on our team. So I'd love for you to go back and listen to that podcast. But uh, with that, let's jump into this week's content. I want to start by saying this. As Grace Team Leaders, it is our job to take the brilliance that is present on our, uh, the, the team that we have, the gifts that the players have that are on our team. It's our job to take those gifts and ensure that those graces are all flowing in the right direction. Let me say it this way. Uh, we are responsible as leaders to unify our team in such a way that it focuses them all on a singular goal that we accomplish together. Many people feel this is a challenge and it's almost impossible when it comes to leading groups of volunteers, which is exactly our context. Since they are not employees, we can't fire them, we don't pay them. How do we then lead people and and convince them and compel them to bring their strengths faithfully, consistently, and in submission to the rest of the body? In this episode, I want to talk about establishing the common win. This is a how to build an uncommon unity in your team. Here's where I want to begin. I want to look briefly at the difference between a common win and a forced win. Many times people say when it comes to leading in the context of the local church, well, we're dealing with volunteers, and they almost say it to a sense that we have a disadvantage because, you know, if only we were in an, uh, an organization or a company where they were employees, we could enforce things that have to be, uh, they have to show up on time where we're going to fire them. They're not going to receive a paycheck if they don't work the hours that they've agreed to. You know, it's all the things that you would get out of an employee. But I honestly think that we need to look at this of leading volunteers as actually a really massive advantage. Think of it this way. We want to instill in our team the common win. And I believe a common win is not actually easily created in a company with employees. I think when it comes to companies and employees, they have what's called enforced wins. Think about this. Is there unity in the company that perhaps you work in? Perhaps there is a unity, but what is driving that unity? Is it because everybody's agreed that we actually love working together? Not necessarily. They're all different. They come from different backgrounds. Is it because they they think, well, you know, I could be working anywhere. This is the place that I've chosen to work. Not necessarily. They might be there because they just need a paycheck desperately. See, when it comes to working for a company, it's not that all companies are bad. It's just simply the reason that there is a unity there is the people who have come together, they, they have come to a win or a mission for that company, not because they want to see the mission accomplished, but because they want to receive a paycheck. They want to receive the benefits of giving their strengths and their work away. It's an enforced win. A, a boss or, or a CEO might say, hey, we have a mission, we have a win, but that win is, is enforced. It is forced upon people uh, by telling them, hey, look, if you, don't, if you don't help us in the win, you're not going to get paid. If you, don't, if you don't help us in the win, uh, we're going to fire you. If you don't help us in the win, we're going to demote you. All the motivations for accomplishing the wins are negative in a sense. It's, it's, if you don't do this, we will not do this for you. What's the difference between a forced win and a common win? Well, a common win is what we have here 
at Northlands and what we have uh, really as, as the church body. We were not given an okay commission by Jesus. We were given a great commission. I believe it's a commission that is actually in the very center of our beings. It's something that we long for. We want to give ourselves away to something that is bigger than ourselves. We want to give ourselves away that's going to bring impact, that's going to change lives, that's going to transform lives. And so when it comes to a common win, can we just think about this for a second? We have just here at Northlands alone, not to mention all the other churches around the world, men and women from different backgrounds, different belief systems, different experiences, all merging together under a common understanding of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And when we come together, we come with different strengths, we come with different abilities, but we're submitting all of those strengths and abilities towards a common win, to see life transformation, to see the gospel proclaimed, to see uh, lives be, that have been enslaved to sin and death now being awakened and alive in faith. And so when it, when it comes to the advantage that we have of leading volunteers, sure, we don't have the, we can't hold a threat of firing them or, or demotion or not paying them if they don't work, but what do we have instead? We have the ability to inspire and compel them to a better win. Why? Because we all have a common win, a win that we've all agreed on in our own volition to sign up for and to be a part of. So the people who are on your teams right now, they are there not because you force them to be, not because they have to be, but because they've made the decision, this is the team that I want to be a part of. You're actually, you have an advantage over a company that has a number of employees that they pay to be there. You have an advantage because that person's saying, I want to be here. Our job as leaders then is to take that desire and to continually fan it into flames and compel them towards the bigger mission and the understanding of the common win. So what, what, let's just clarify for a moment, what's the common win? A common win is a desired goal that we all buy into of our own volition. Why is this important? Because this is something, a common win, when you recognize the common win that's on your team that everybody is a part of, it does something that a forced win can never accomplish. A common win produces uncommon unity. This is the church. It is uncommon that we have this level of unity. It's when you think about it, we have multi-generation, multi-race and ethnicity, uh, multi-socioeconomics, all, all merging together into one space. And I, I challenge you, I go, where else do we see that level of diversity coming together in the church? More than that, working together in a unified space. This is uncommon unity. It's not easily found in other companies. People can talk about the diversity that they have in the workforce, but really when it comes to that, that level of diversity, it's just people coming together to accomplish not a common goal, but a forced goal that's been put in front of them. I really sincerely believe this. Because we have a common win of gathering together as a church, we also have the advantage of an uncommon unity. An uncommon unity will always produce a much bigger and grander fruit than a forced win can ever accomplish. So let's talk about this for a minute. The goal being we have a common win. The, the key is, is how do we draw people, compel people to this win? It's, see, what, what ends up happening is all the busyness of life and everything that takes place here at Northlands, there's all these different tasks to accomplish. And what's going to end up happening is your team is going to get lost in the weeds of all the tasks and information and, and making sure that they've got planning centers set up correctly and making sure that they're there on time and that they're leading people to the right, the right directions and all that. That's all, it's just muddying up the waters. What we have to do as leaders is we always have to show our teams the bigger picture. See, at Northlands, no matter what team you serve on, no matter what team you are leading, we have a common win here at Northlands. It's our mission statement. We exist to build churches that transform lives by helping people experience the gospel of grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. What's Northlands' common win? The win that we want to continually put at the forefront of the minds of all of our teammates. It's this, that we want to see life transformation. And we believe that life transformation comes when people experience the gospel of grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so what do we want to do? We want to create an environment where it is probable, continually maximize probability that people are going to experience the grace of God and the power of the person of the Holy Spirit when they come through our doors. So as your team, whatever your team is, if it's on the worship team, if it's the parking lot team, if it's the ministry team, if it's children's ministry, if it's the production, all of us are going after this one common win. Have we created an environment for people to embrace and experience the power of the Holy Spirit, and the gospel of grace. And you say, well, okay, how, do, how does my team play into that? I think of it this way. When you have a common win and you understand no matter what, we have to see that accomplished, then any obstacle that is going to prevent people from seeing that win. So perhaps let's just say the lobby is quiet 
for some reason, uh, hosts aren't in the, the right spot, and so guests are coming in, but they're not being greeted by people. If you're on a different team, it's your responsibility to recognize, hey, we wanna make sure that the lobby, before they even get to the auditorium, is an atmosphere that's created for people to feel welcome so that there's no obstacle from them getting to the lobby, to the auditorium, to their seat, so that they can hear a message of grace and to encounter the power of the Holy Spirit. We're all making sure that we're moving any obstacles that are in the way of people. Okay, so now that we've taken the description of here's the for, what a forced win is and here's the common win, I want to talk about how do we determine the win for our teams? How do we as leaders create a win for our teams to see and then continually point them in that direction? So that's the target that we're continually going after week after week after week. How do we determine our team's win? I want us to answer this question. As leaders, we do this every Sunday. We get into our car and we say some type of phrase like this. Uh, Today was an amazing day at church. Today was amazing at Northlands because blank happen. Perhaps your spouse who couldn't make it for some reason or, or a friend of yours, how was church today? Oh, it was amazing. And you draw back on the memory of because this thing happened. What is that for you? It would matter, your, you know your context, your team. There's, there's stuff that happens that you just love. You get ex, There's an exhilaration that comes from it. Your team gets excited when it happens. They celebrate because it happens. What is that thing? When you're able to answer that fill in the blank, that tells you what the common win is that you need to point your team in the direction of because people will unify around something that matters, that brings impact, that life transformation is surrounded by. So always ask that question. Hey, Sunday was amazing or Sunday will be amazing because this is going to happen. And as leaders, we want to lead our team to that thing. Now, here's what I want to do. Once we've clarified, okay, this is the win. When we, when we say as a leader, we go, man, every time this happens, it, it just explodes our team. We love it. We celebrate it. it it's, it's what gives us life. When we clarify that, now we have to ask the question, how do we get our team to embrace that with us? So I want to talk about this. The way that we help our team embrace the win, the common win, we continually show them the bigger picture. I found this to be very true. People on our team that all that they have this one thing in common. We all want to contribute to something that matters. People don't have a problem serving and pouring out their lives, but no one wants to waste their lives. As leaders, it is our job to show them the significance of the win. Now, how do we do that? How do we continually not just clarify, hey, this is the goal, this is the target, this is the win for us and for this team, but how do we get our team to embrace it, showing them a bigger picture? How do we continually help them see something bigger? I guarantee this, people people don't, don't wanna see the team fail. What happens is they've had busyness of life, they come in Monday to Saturday, it might have been a crazy week for them, and so they get here on time, they're just showing up, they've got their, their serving shirts on, on. They're trying to get on post and they're just thinking of all the to do's that are, have to take place on the Sunday. Oh, I've got to get this stuff out. I got to make sure this is set up. I got to make sure the slides are prepared. I got to make sure my guitar's tuned. I got to make sure that children's check in is ready. They're just thinking about all the to do's. And as leaders, we help bring clarity to the to do's, but we always want to elevate people's view and understanding to the bigger picture. Hey guys, we're going to get all this practical stuff settled. We're going to get everything set up. Checkpoints are going to look great. But more than that, let's just remember last week we saw incredible life transformation in the children's ministry, we want to see that again. We don't want to just get this stuff done and, and just make a checklist of, okay, we got that done. We want to get personal with people. No matter what team we're a part of, we want to see their lives transformed. How do we help them see the bigger picture? Here's three things that will help them see the bigger picture. We show them the lives that are being transformed because of your team. Because your team exists, this happens. Life transformation happens every single week in this way. Let's say you're on the coffee ministry team. You say, well, how, could, how can coffee ministry lead to transformation? Think about this. Your team on the coffee ministry might be the only Jesus that that person sees that week. Have you thought about that? That as believers, we are called to not just preach a gospel message, but we are called to, to embody it. We're called to love people irrationally. We're called to love people and give hope to people in a way that is lavish love. Like we've received from God, we're called to give that. And people coming to the coffee table, making a cup of coffee, and now engaging with you, you might be the only chance that they have to bump in to that level of love and hope. That's what your team does 
Every time you have an opportunity to connect with somebody, it's an opportunity to push them further down the field of connecting with the Holy Spirit, of embracing and experience the gospel of grace. Every single one of our teams has the opportunities to do that, no matter where you are serving in the life of Northlands. As leaders, we are going to continually point out when we see that type of life transformation or connection, when we hear the stories of people being touched, we want to report that back to our teams. Why? When we celebrate those wins, when we celebrate the desired uh, impact, oh, today was amazing because this happened, and we celebrate that, you know what it does? Every single person on your team, you know what they have in common? Nobody wants to be on a losing team. And when you report back to them the success, they feel like they're a part of a team that is always winning. Everybody wants to be on a team that is a dream team filled with A players. The way that that happens is not just people growing in their skill and ability, it's leaders continually highlighting both players doing incredible work, but also the incredible impact that it's being made because your team exists. Number two, show them how their strength contributed to the win. Get personal with people. Uh, uh, what they brought mattered. Remember, people don't have a problem serving and pouring out their lives, getting there early. I found this to be true. And if you're having struggles with people who, who aren't showing up on post or they're, they're, they're showing up late, I promise you, again, we're, we're gonna, the forbidden phrase, our people won't show up on time, not allowed. We have not led them to. And when you take the time to stop and connect with somebody and say, hey, the way you contribute to our team, it matters. I promise you they're not going to worry about waking up a little bit earlier. They're not going to worry about what time they're supposed to be on post because they know that what they're bringing, it matters. There's purpose behind it. People want to give themselves away to something bigger. And as leaders, we have to connect them to the bigger. Everybody's going to get lost in the weeds. That's what, that's what non-leaders do. They get lost in the weeds of the tasks at hand. But leaders continually have a 30,000-foot view of vision. And when you bump into the people on your team, you're to, you're to convey that vision to them in your actions, but also in your words. Tell people, hey, what you brought today made our team better. And what you brought today helped us hit this win. Number three, this one's important, and it's for the people who have been on your team for a while. We want, the, here's the two things we talked about. We want to show them uh, the lives that are being transformed, how we're winning on our team, and we also want to show them how their strengths matter and their contributions matter. But the third one is this, not showing them something. We want to ask them to partner with us and motivate others to the win. We ask people to bring their strengths to accomplish the win, but we ask them to champion the win to, uh, to others to establish it as their win. If you want people to embody, and, and, and companies say it this way, we want our employees to take ownership. We don't want them just to be employees, we want them to take ownership. This is so difficult for companies to accomplish, but for us who are leading volunteers who have a common win, who have an uncommon unity, who want to be here, who want to give their strengths for free, who want to serve the body of Christ, we have the ability to establish this win as their very own. And the way that you do that is you ask them, hey, you have people on your team who, who have become, in a sense, they're, they're like right-hand man to you. They've been here for a long time. They're giving their lives. They're serving their guts out. Go to them and say, hey, can you help me gel this team together? Can you help me champion this common win? Every time you have an opportunity, would you mind just saying something to the rest of the team? Just because you're the leader doesn't mean it's your sole responsibility to be the only driving force that builds unity on your team. Unify with one or two people, but ask them directly to partner with you. Hey, I want to build unity on our team. I want our team to feel like it's strong and working well together, and I need your help to do that. When you ask people to partner with you in this win, when you ask them to be champions for you, you know what they do? They do exactly that. People want to feel like not only are they a part of something and belong to something, but they want to believe that they're contributing to something that matters, and they want to feel ownership. They want to feel like, this is my thing. I'm a part of this tribe. I, I, I matter. I'm not just bringing a certain strength, but I'm helping keep this family together. And so we want to ask team members that we trust to partner with us in that, who will continually be champion voices as we're continually getting lost again in all the weeds and the to-dos that we have multiple voices saying, hey guys, remember, we're here for something much bigger than just serving coffee or being on the production team or on the parking lot team. We're for something much bigger here. We're creating an environment for people to experience grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to do everything in our power that they would experience those things. We're gonna remove every obstacle that might keep somebody from experiencing the Holy Spirit and grace. Two takeaways and we're done. Uh, in your next meeting, I'd, I'd like you to do this. In your next meeting or gathering with your team, I'd like you to take five minutes out of your time together to remind the team of Northland's win. Take, I know we have busy to-dos. I know there's checkpoints that we have to do. There's slides that we have to get out. We, we've got to get the songs. We have to run through everything, all of those things. Um, but remind them again of the win. Remind them we will do whatever it takes to help people experience grace and the Holy Spirit. 
Think through some examples of how that may express itself on your team. I want you to think through that this week, whether it's the coffee team, whether it's the host and the, and the guest services, whether you're uh, helping facilitate in the Hall of Champions room, whether you're serving on the worship team or production. Think about how is it that our team helps add to the expression of grace and the power of the Holy Spirit? How does our team contribute to creating an environment for people to experience something profound and beautiful this week? And I want you to talk about that uh, with your team and point them to the common win. Tell, tell them in that meeting why what they bring matters, why what they're pouring their lives out and serving for is not just making sure coffee is out, but it's actually directly impacting the lives of people. This is what people will give their lives away for, for free. Not because they have to, not because they're forced to. It's a win that they are signing up to, for because they know that it matters and they know that they can make a massive difference by bringing their gifts. Number two, uh, what is one thing you can do to help a person or persons on your team embrace the win? Think about this for a second. Perhaps uh, if they're brand new to your team, uh, you pull them aside to talk to them about the bigger picture for the first time. You know, everybody signs up for teams like, oh, maybe I'm, I might enjoy making coffee in the morning or, or setting out some breakfast for the different volunteer teams or, or doing slides on the production team or camera work. I might enjoy that. But, but take them aside if they're brand new and talk to them about the bigger picture. Say, hey, we're not just here to, to do some production tasks. We're here to help create an environment for people to experience God. Uh, take them aside and say, man, we're, we're here because we were after life transformation. We love that you're on our team. We think that you're going to add to us on this journey, but, but show them the bigger win at play. Uh, perhaps maybe they've been on your team for a while. Maybe this is the person that you want to encourage them by telling them how you appreciate them bringing their strength and how they've impacted the team's win. People who have been on your team for a while point out the areas in the past where they've just contributed in profound ways. Do you want to know why? Because if they've contributed in a way that's impacted the team for the positive and you point that out, you know what they're going to continue to do more of? That thing. So continually encourage them and point that out. Or perhaps maybe you have somebody who's been on your team for a long time and you've built a lot of trust with them. This is the person you want to pull aside and ask them to help you encourage and bring unity to the team. Let these people be your champions. It's not just you voicing the big win. It's not just you trying to drive unity for your team, but gather a couple champions who have been with you for a while and say, guys, it is our responsibility to raise the vision of our team, to make sure that we don't get lost in the weeds of tasks and to-dos, that they're constantly seeing the big common win. Now, uh, with that, this is a big deal for us here at Northlands. I want to just challenge and commission every single Grace Team leader. You're going to have common wins for your own individual teams, but as Northlands, we are continuing to grow and to explode. And I want to challenge you as a Grace Team leader. Don't just think about the win for your individual team and in ministry. Think about the overall win for Northlands as a whole. Let's not just talk about, hey, today at Northlands was amazing because this happened in our children's ministry, or this happened in our ministry team, or this happened on our worship team. But think about, man, today overall was absolutely amazing because in our doors, when people walked in the doors, they experienced, whether it was in the back lobby or the front lobby, whether they came into the auditorium, whether they were serving as volunteers in our Hall of Champions, wherever they found themselves in the Northlands building, the environment was electrified with the opportunities for people to experience the profound grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't just want to unify our own individual teams, but we want to unify ourselves as one big team here at Northlands. We're never going to say our people won't or that's not in my job description. Rather, we are always going to say, man, we have not led our people to yet experience something profound. And the way that we do that is by example. As Grace Team leaders, let's continually serve one another and all of our teams here because together we're going to create a profound environment, not just in this single building, but in our community and in our city. I hope that was helpful for you. I'm excited to continue in next week with a new episode. But if you have any questions, if there's something I can clarify about this week's episode, I'd love to hear your questions. Again, uh, you can send those into tyler at northlandschurch.com and we'll see you next week.